Yeah, this is very much casual, informal, just sharing session, you know, uh, okay. with the possibility of exploring what movie. Uh, on the field of STEM, of course, on the field of environment and eco also, which, uh, you know, that you're very much championing. I also feel that, you know, uh, part of the Bamboo, Malaysia Bamboo Society, we would also like to promote that. Uh, maybe among our audience, there are kids or even some other in the industry who are keen, then they can join, you know, uh, especially in the activity part. So today's session is very much uh, part of the exploratory uh, we consider this as downtime la, because everybody is cooped up. You can't go, you can't do. And uh, the most you can do is webinar. So let's capitalize on this uh, situation and see what we can do to interact, to network, uh, especially the kids out there. Like William said, some of them are really hungry for knowledge, for activities. And we appreciate them, you know. Whichever webinar, I see some of them very consistent. Like Rajin Tangan. So I must congratulate you. Uh, uh, okay. uh, Thirty seconds, sir. Uh. Okay. So we are. Thirty seconds, sir. Okay, I think we can begin, Ramesh, Mr. Ramesh and uh, Dato, we're... Thank you, thank One minute, you. Uh, one minute. Okay, we are live now. All right, okay. thank you. So, um, <clears throat> welcome, Dr. Nina, uh, to our series of webinar uh, to introduce to all our listeners out there. We have got kids. Uh, we also have got some adults and some from the eco organizations, you know, because we have a very strong eco community that is based in the Daman, uh, in our stand for all sector, which is led by Mr. Ku. So he's also invited some. So just to let Dato Mazalina know, uh, two main audience. One is those who are really into environment and one who are kids who are looking for fresh new ideas. Uh, okay. Just to give you a little background. Uh, this was done in conjunction with the school holidays and also during this MCO because, as I mentioned, many of them are cooped up. And so Daman actually also suggested that uh, we do this thing to engage, to keep the audience active during this lockdown period. He said, all right, good. And then Daman said they were also giving some uh, vouchers, you know, to encourage uh, the winners. So what will happen today, we will hear that to talk about the wonders of bamboo uh, for garden as well as environment. She is the authority, okay? Oh, yeah. After she presents her slides and talks about the issue, then we'll ask some questions. There'll be about five questions, really. very simple questions. All you have to do is listen properly to Dr. Mazalina, answer the question, and you will get some very attractive mystery gifts. Uh, of course, it'll be some of our STEM products and maybe some vouchers for workshops. It can come and do free workshops sponsored by us and some from Daman as well. Okay, so that's basically that. So that's the background. So let me have the pleasure of introducing that to Dr. Mazalina, a very, very eminent scientist, researcher, and somebody who is very passionate about nature trees. Right? Uh, she was the Deputy Director General of FRIM. Right? She just retired, mm -hmm. and she's got her hands full of lots of things. But uh, when we invited her, she said, yes, yeah, she will be happy because she wants to touch base with this community as well. That's uh, her, her designation, uh, but she's also the president of the Malaysian Bamboo Society. Very exciting mm -hmm. organization, and she will tell us what the association or the society is doing and what we can also be collaborating with uh, the Malaysian Bamboo Society. And her background, her qualification is in biotechnology, right, Dato? Yes, yes. So she has researched, maybe if time permits, she will tell 
is uh, some of the research findings and some of the commercialization that she has uh, initiated. Uh, I've known that for a close 20 years, Dato. Yes, yes, uh, a long time yeah. ago. <laughs> yeah, so, so, so that's basically her passion in this, uh, yeah, what do you call in this, uh, not just bamboo, it's actually whole forestry. Bamboo is just one aspect that she is very interested. Okay, I must tell you that when it comes to trees, nature, and later I'll share one story that you know that I think you guys will be very interested to know. Okay, that with that, like I said, this is a very informal. Uh, yeah. You like to introduce yourself further first, or then we go to the slides. All right. Okay. Um, first of all, thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And a very good uh, afternoon, yeah, uh, Mr. Ramesh. Thank you for the kind introduction. Uh, I'd like to thank also uh, STEM webinar series uh, being uh, managed by STEM for all, uh, and 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 the whole team, yeah, uh, behind the scene. Um, thank you. Uh, on, on behalf of uh, Malaysian Bamboo Society, I'm happy to share some of my view and also about the wonders of bamboo for gardens and environment. It's quite a big topic there. And, and when, when I was uh, looking at the content, um, wow, in, in 45 minutes, it's not enough. Uh, I have been with Frim for 33 years, wish that I could you know, share bits and pieces of what I learned along the way and especially on bamboo. So. Um, Along with this, the environment, we are celebrating the Environment Day on the 5th of June, yeah, the last week. And, and uh, the, the team uh, was what, ecosystem restoration. And bamboo indeed is the, uh, you know, has been playing its part as part of the biodiversity and it's been utilized by humankind ever since 2000 years ago during the Shang Dynasty in China. So, uh, we uh, in Malaysia, uh, you know, we we really look at bamboo whenever there's craft and little bits in here. But actually, a lot have been done and on research. So uh, I I really look forward to this session. Yeah, Ramesh, thank you very much. And uh, shall we move on to the slides then? Because I got like thirty slides to share within forty minutes. Thank you. Okay. Okay, I'm trying to open up the slides now. All right. Welcome all viewers, especially Just the kids. Moment. Thank you for taking your sweet time to join us here. <laughs> Okay, it's just loading. <clears throat> yeah. Oh. Okay, is it visible? I, I can't see it. Can, can, can you, you see it? None okay. yet. One moment. It's still loading. Not yet, yeah? Uh, as usual, after rehearsing, uh, <laughs> is it on now? No, I, I can't see anything except for there are what nine of us here. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Still, it's still loading. I don't know. As usual, you can rehearse two and a half million times, and then you know it's all okay. And the last time, it's still it's hanging now. Just one moment, huh? yeah. Uh, welcome yeah. everyone. Welcome everyone who has come to our session. Uh, the, we we haven't actually started yet. Uh, Dato is just about to start her slide presentation, so you guys are just in time. Uh, but we're actually loading the presentation, so please be patient a little while more. Is it visible now? Not yet. Not 
not yet. Okay, I'm going to start again because it's not loading for some reason. I'll stop sharing. Okay. We have about 55. Oh, I think it's uh, very heavy. Yeah, we have about 55 participants here on uh, on Google Meet. I think we have uh, some more participants uh, listening out at uh, our Stand for All Makerspace uh, Facebook page over there as well. Haven't got the numbers yet. We also are running this on uh, YouTube. Okay. I'm still admitting. Uh, yeah. Uh, guys, those of you who are trying to get into uh, Google Meet, uh, please keep trying because uh, anyone that comes up on my screen, I'm admitting. All right. So it's probably the system. If you haven't uh, received it, just keep on trying. Yeah. Just keep on trying, uh, and I will admit you. As soon as the the pop up screen comes up, I will admit you. Those who are on YouTube and on Facebook, we have a capacity here as well. So we have about sixty uh, people currently. Okay, um, <clears throat> just give me a minute. Uh, I don't know, it has gone completely blank. Oh. Uh, it's too heavy or what? Is it? Maybe, uh, Dato, you can uh, maybe verbalize a bit about the bamboo industry okay. to keep our audience uh, interested. All right. Um, as you know that uh, in Rancangan Malaysia ke-12 or RMK-12, uh, the government have moved uh, towards uh, bamboo uh, industry. Uh, this is why uh, a lot of people put a lot of uh, interest into uh, seriously looking into this. And being uh, Malaysian Bamboo Society has been, um, you know, uh, uh, established in 2016. Uh, although it's about five years back, um, at that time we wanted to more or less focus on to uh, create awareness for the members, for, for, for majority of people, not only members, whoever would like to become members, we welcome them. So the, during at that time, uh, we aim for um, collection of bamboo actually. Uh, you know, so, so that uh, when, when you collect bamboo and place in one place, you collect various types of species, you call that bamboo setum. Okay, so the first, uh, actually, frame has been um, establishing it since the 70s and, and moved forward in the 90s uh, very actively. And uh, frame have about 45 species in collection. But at 20, in 2016, we are helping Putrajaya Botanical Garden. So that is the, 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 the uh, active uh, moment that we carry on until today. Uh, a lot of people would like to collect their own, uh, put around their house and things like that. So a lot of people learn from, uh, you know, uh, ge older generations when it comes to uh, building houses, you know, because bamboo has been said many times as poor man's timber, but actually it's a green goal. Actually, it's, it's, it's a goal that if you get, uh, you know, a hectare of bamboo, you you are really rich. It's, it's, it's like once you plant, you don't have to replant. It keep on growing. And, and you have to harvest them in order to keep it growing for hundreds and hundreds of years. And that is why um, we believe that if we were to deforest our, you know, that, like logging and all that in, in the forest, 
uh, it takes many years for the forest to become matured, but not bamboo. So this is why uh, bamboo, we as F MBS would like to create this as uh, the next commodity for Malaysia. So the, the community of Malaysia will be all palm, rubber, right? So we like to introduce, we like to promote uh, and, and push forward bamboo as, as in many parts because bamboo is not uh, at all um, being, can be wasted from the, the roots up to the leaf. You know, when you harvest, you get the stem, but you harvest for many purposes. Uh, it can be bio energy, you can be biomass, you can be, it can be, uh, you know, stem for the construction. It can be so many utilization of it, including leaf can be uh, eaten uh, or making kueh chang. Uh, the Chinese used to 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 use this the dried one, but uh, for Malay we use it for like uh, lemang, you know, to to for hari raya things like that, and and also the young shoots, the rebong, the young shoots can be eaten also. So when you handle all this, uh, the waste is can be turned into charcoal. So these are many things that is not a wasted at all. So once you cut the bamboo. It will grow back in its, its bamboo shoot and within a year, two years later, you can harvest them. So although you can wait for a matured one like three to five years, but actually if you want to do lemang, lemang is only take about one and a half years from the shoot to the to the stem or what it called cum C U L M. So this is why uh it is, you know human are the one who uh, have to ask ourselves what more can be done with bamboo it's not that what bamboo can be utilized for so this is why we are being limited by our own knowledge and we have to keep on doing research and and and, and encouraging the young ones to be interested because you cannot go wrong with bamboo. Bamboo is easy to be planted, and being a, a biology, I mean biotechnologist. I'm a seed technologist, biji benih ya, biji benih hutan. So I'm a, I, I, I've been handling seeds, and bamboo is among the earliest seeds that I handle. I uh, store them, I plant them back, and they can grow easily. Uh, very easily grow and if you don't uh, have any seeds because to get seeds from bamboo is quite tough because it was uh, a myth to say once a bamboo flower and fruit it means it's already dead and it doesn't happen that way because it in clumps in Malaysia it's always in dalam bentuk rumpun ya come so it grows and grows so if it were to die it will be a strain of them and the rest keep on growing so to collect seeds is so easy, but uh, bamboo can be planted through its rhizome. But that is the the roots. Okay, right. The roots of bamboo we call rhizome. So these are the things that uh, a lot aspect can be shared with the, the whoever the listener you want to go upstream, planting, uh, you know, or, or storage or conservation. Uh, or to go to downstream, utilizing and turn it into, uh, you know, new material, new products, whatnot, or, or the, the common product. You know, your chopstick, the one that you use is also from bamboo stem. This is the one that pakai buang, you know, you, uh, because of the hygiene. So it doesn't have to be clean. Once you use it, that's it. You know, it did it, this uh, tremendous usage of of uh, bamboo and 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 uh, a lot of people were saying bamboo is from cradle to grave meaning that when when you were born you be in the cradle of a bamboo basket and when you die you also being wrapped in the bamboo you know so so it's like part of life and this is why uh, we wanted so much to for people to understand in between you just don't born and die you use it okay interesting so, that's very interesting Dato. there's yeah. a we, we seem to be having a line of questions coming in already i think that's quite interesting uh there's one question here oh. asking you uh does our market is our market ready uh for the change from wood based to bamboo based what do you think okay uh this this question has been uh like a chicken and egg kind of thing actually our uh, the demand is there but we don't have enough 
And that's why if you, you're asking, is our market ready? The market was asking, where is it? Okay, so this is why uh, we we end up uh, don't we we can't we can't be uh, blaming uh, because bamboo is in the forest and to go into the forest and harvest you have to get permits you have to get license and that and that's why MBS working together with the whole uh, you know there is a new corporacy corporation called Agro Bamboo. So that is also I, I, among the pro -tem members created in order for the uh, urban or the villages to participate and create and plant bamboo in their land that is idle or not being utilized to the best. So if, uh, you know, so this Tanah Teroso, Tanah Terbia, rather than just having lots of shrubs and you, you don't utilize it proper, why don't you plant bamboo? And then, yeah, and this is soon. It will be a lot of material, and the market will be saying, "Okay, let's have it." There's another interesting question from uh, Yashin Selvakuma. How to get bamboo seeds? I think he's. Uh, uh, I think the the question is uh, being asked on if if they want to grow bamboo in their garden, what do they do? How do they find? Do they get shoots or or is it start with seeds? Okay, actually you can do cuttings, you can do uh, from the rhizome, you can, of course, seeds. A lot of people order the seeds from Lazada. <laughs> Is it? Well, it's, it's as easy as that. You can get all over the world, uh, but you must be responsible. Remember, whenever you plant in your garden, it may creep out because bamboo have a rhizome that go out and, and really growing and, and, you know, we don't want that to become a weed. Okay, so Excellent. you can start in planting in your pots. So if you think you 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 like uh, some bamboo because of uh, your your parents have it at home and things like that, you can get cuttings out of that. Okay, so interesting. You can, yes, there's another question from one of our eco stem partners, uh, Intan. Um, she says um, between bamboo and cane, uh, are they different or are they from the same family? Oh, they are different. Cane is rotan. Rotan, yeah, Calamus uh, species, Calamus manan, Calamus mana is the largest rotan with a good sizable uh, diameter. And and there are many types of rotan. Uh, and, and, and bamboo is hollow. Although nowadays we can get bamboo that is filled, that is like bulo tumpat, means it's full, uh, but there is still bamboo. So it's just that the difference is bamboo is erect or, you know, in a clump, but rattan is uh, a climber. So it climbs, it's really, it looks for the sunshine. So Would you consider it a parasite, rattan? Would you consider it a parasite? No, no. It is no. Uh, naturally grown yeah. in the forest uh, and it climbs because it's always germinate down there and have to look for the sunshine. So it goes and creeping up the trees. So it's not parasite, it's, not, it's, it's just uh, you know, whether you sun. utilize them or not. But the seed can be eaten. Okay, uh, calamus or the rotten seed is uh, you, you, you feel it tastes like a sour strawberry, sour, oh, you know, okay. strawberry. And the, the insects, uh, the, the animals like uh, monkeys and all that, depending on, on this. Mm. You know, all right. Uh, Nor, uh, Nor Soleha has well, we've got many questions here. That's all. <laughs> uh, Nor Soleha. Yeah, yeah. Like we take the questions okay. first before your slides. But uh, Nor Soleha is asking, uh, is there any type of bamboo like tree that hum, probably how many species are there available? Sunny also mentioned it. All right. Okay. Uh, the world in the world, uh, there are estimated about 1,300 species. Wow. Okay. In the whole world. And in Malaysia, we have about 80 species. In Peninsula Malaysia alone, we have 59 species. So, you know, myriads of it. I, I'm, I'm already prepared, you know, even the species, uh, the, the, because bamboo is so, they can grow anywhere, even at below minus 15 degrees Celsius. Oh, that's so incredible. That, that, that kind of, because we always think about the tropical belt, the Katulistiwa, yeah? so the, the mm. middle center. But the, the thing about it can grow up 
to the northern and to the southern, like I mean, a lot in um, Australia towards all the US, but still those are growing outside, you know, in the real field uh, with the mm. snow and everything, they can still withstand at minus uh, 15 and below. Uh, so it's a very robust, very robust, uh, very uh, what robust. Call, and uh, grows uh, most uh, uh, frequently, I would say, in the equator where it's a hot and humid yeah. weather. Interesting. Yes. Uh, there's another question from uh, Taylin Kumar. Can we uh, use bamboo to make paper to replace the tree? Yes, yes. There have of been a lot, yes. of, yeah, uh, a lot of effort have been utilizing bamboo fiber. Yeah, they, they make it from bamboo the bamboo fiber. fiber. Even though there are also company wanted mm. to make into toilet paper from bamboo i think it's a bit uh you know very lavishly so uh but but somehow uh bamboo pepper has been utilized in china for their art of uh you know drawings and everything and it's a very um exp expensive paper ah that's interesting i got another interesting one this is a i would say a cross between bamboo and art a uh, question from kel nico what would be your thoughts in painting bamboos in flower pots to control the rhizomes. Painting bamboo. Uh, painting bamboos in flower pots to control the rhizomes. I uh, I'm a bit. Uh, I also don't understand this question. But in terms of bamboo painting, I've seen some uh, some artists actually use bamboos. They take the ex they they cut the bamboos in half and then they actually paint on it uh, kampong scenes and everything. It is yes. actually a very well known uh, souvenir item that that yes. is sold everywhere. Yeah. Yes, that that is uh, the most simple uh, light weight that you can put in your bag. That is not too heavy to carry around, right? So it's a mm. most sought after. If the the artist is very uh, you know very intelligent in doing it and uh, you know very skillful in in creating that design on the bamboo most of the time they use the bamboo uh, roots you know between the bamboo roots and the bamboo stem they, they yes. turn it around and making it like the face of the old people with the hair coming down it actually the is the roots so they carve it there's more on carving so that is sought after is it's not uh, a cheap one but it's very very artful to have those Right. Oh yes, I've seen the, the carvings done and uh, they use it as, uh, what do you call it, lamp stands as well. Yes. They yes. put light inside it with the carving so it really comes out very brilliantly. And yes. uh, it's a very, uh, I would say it's a very uh, big uh, tourist, uh, what do you call it, uh, the tourist demand is quite good there. Oh, I see Mr. Ramesh is back. Yeah, just one moment, John. Dato, if you have access to your phone, can you just forward back that uh, what do you call the slides to me? I will use my laptop. My computer seems to be just kaput, just doesn't want to. It's reload, reloading. Okay, I resend back. Yeah, you send to me. I will try to put it up uh, in my laptop. All right. And yeah. I'm saving back and I send. Yeah. There you are, Ramesh. Oops. Thank you. So sorry, audience. Just uh, give me a couple of minutes. Did yeah, you get it? You. Yes, yes, I, I think he's received it, yes. Okay. Uh, apologies, everyone. Uh, had a bit of a glitch there. We're trying to get the, the slides. Uh, Dato wants to share the, the 30 over slides that she has. But I think their the questions are streaming in. Please continue sending in the questions because uh, some of them are very interesting. And uh, what, what other questions are coming in? Uh, why is bamboo eco-friendly from Shavlin Tanaj, Tanaraj? Why is bamboo eco-friendly? First, first, I, I have listed all the, the needed of bamboo to safeguard the environment. First, it sequester carbon more efficiently compared to other trees. Okay, bamboo can absorb carbon dioxide 40% much better than the normal trees. And then it releases 35% more oxygen. So we need it more oxygen. Second is also uh, can grow very fast. So it means that once you cut, it will grow back. So if you have trees, no, no doubt, uh, you know, trees can have those coppicing and everything, but it is uh, competitive among them because of one stem. 
and but bamboo bamboo is actually grass family so like any grass that you know it, it is a headache to remove weeds and this is what bamboo is just a big size grass so uh, and then it is uh, roots covers the very you know like networking and and crawling everywhere when so it holds on to the soil so it protects the soil from erosion so and and that's why you know people in the village or in a very uh, far uh, from civilization they utilize bamboo to make into housing food many parts we, we, we calculated about 12 uh, items that is case we needed to uh, to really need to uh, you can can be helping human and in the same time looking after the environment all right so thank you that's a very good uh, answer there another question from uh, Judy Chua is there a hybrid uh, or GMO type or all the seeds are natural seeds Oh, all are natural. We don't have GMO. Uh, no, not not with bamboo. You don't you don't waste money on to finding that. All you have to do is crossing, just the normal breeding. You can cross that definitely. But GMO is manipulating the genes and all. And you don't need to do that because they are too fast and they override you before you producing anything for your lab. They already far ahead you know so don't yeah, waste I, money on that they are so robust and they grow so wild is sometimes yes. when uh, even when i planted it in my garden i put it into to the ground and it just spread so fast and it was a question of controlling it uh, i i do yes. know how how robust it is especially another question from uh, uh what's uh, kel nico j oh jaden seven years old how long does it take to grow from seed to stem Jaden, seven years old. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jaden, if you want a matured one, three years. Okay, so if you want something that grow, it can grow within two weeks. You already have the little babies popping out from the from the soil. So from that little ones, you can grow up to the matured that you want to harvest. It takes like three years. But in case you want the young young uh, young stem, that's where you you can uh, harvest. Uh, you know, for like lemang, you don't need to it to be uh, matured. Lemang is very thin. Okay, so mm. you remember, have you seen bamboo in your life? That's what I need to ask first. <laughs> Some of you may not know. I have been cutting bamboo this morning. Hold on, I will get it. I think uh, we Malaysians uh, really do know what bamboo is because we enjoy the the the, the real harvest from uh, our Hari Raya Lemang. It's really really delicious when you open it up. Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> from this your garden, a, ah, my my own my own garden uh, in front Very of nice. my house. This is bulo lemang kuning. Okay, they all you always see bulo lemang is green, but this is the yeah. yellow one, and it got striped. You can see the stripe. You see that? Yeah. It got green stripe. This is yellow, but this is the young one. It can grow as as big as your, you know, like about three inches. Uh, and you can see that uh, bamboo, anything with a segment like that, people like to say it's bamboo, but careful. This is the nodes, okay, ruas. This is the internode. So between two nodes, this is the internode. So this it's is like the chamber, one. Right? Yeah, this is the one that is empty in it. It's a hollow. So between each one, this is the, the leaf where, where all the, I'm sorry, it's already dry. Uh, it was taken at 11 this morning. Uh, so you can see the, the, the branches coming out with the leaf. So the branches and all that, these are uh, where sometimes when you cut underneath here, it will, you put in the water and then you plant it back, it will grow roots from this point here. So this is where uh, you end up uh, having it to grow and and become uh, faster compared to seeds. Uh, seeds will grow smaller and it will grow upwards. Okay, I can see some of my families also are in the group. Welcome. That's, it, that's, that's another question from. Uh, I just want to try uh, Albert Gunn. He uh -huh. asked, uh, "Do you recommend bamboo for boundary land? That means maybe to use it as a fencing. I think, it, yep. thinking it looks nice and for privacy reason. If yes." yes 
because there's 1,300 types. So which type is uh, appropriate for, for that kind of? Okay. Now, it depends Maybe on... Don't want it to grow 150. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, the first thing is try to grow the one that is you get it locally. Okay? When you bring it from outside, it is like you bring something that you need to learn about. But if you you have you have studied it first locally, so bamboo are coming in two types, yeah, in two groups. One is the running uh, rhizome, means that it goes forward. One is clumping. You call it rumpun in Malaysia. So it uh, depends on the, your boundary. Is it your house boundary or your uh, orchard boundary? Okay, so if it's a house boundary, you better have a, like a, you know, segment it with proper, because it will go creeping. Towards in the ground, end. right? Yeah. Need to so go be in careful the ground about that. Yeah. Create a, a, a boundary, that means it'll just go all over the place and it do yes. go very fast. Another yes. question from String, uh, from String for the Hawk, uh, that's his handle. Uh, what species uh, that might probably can replace our timber in the future and can be grown in our climate. Uh, okay. Basically, I think he wants a replacement for timber, maybe to make furniture. Okay, this is a very technical question. For that, mm. uh, MTIB, Malaysian Timber Industry Board, have proposed five species. Beteng, Betong, Beti, Semantan, and Hitam. Okay, you can find that uh, at the MTIB internet, okay? So these are all the thick, because of the thick, what you call this uh, uh the 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 wall thick wall so you want anything above because of the fiber you can turn that into one solid you know people in indonesia have been using it as a pole for housing but we in in frame we have been utilizing for engineered lumber so we utilize the meat to get the fiber and to put it back so which species is actually whichever that produce a lot of fiber so if you think you want to replace for the uh, wood industry you have to have constant supply of bamboo oh i see that i got another question from uh, brian he's been a very very great supporter he brian uh, daniel he's 11 years old from sk uh, taman mega his question is that oh, is bamboo more sustainable than wood and cotton Yes. I'm not sure he yes. asked cotton, but yeah. I think, uh, yeah, Brian, the answer is yes, uh, resounding yes. yes. Uh, bamboo is more sustainable. I mean, it grows uh, in a crazy way even without looking after it, you know what I mean? Yes. Another question from uh, Intan, from our eco partner, STEM partner. Um, in Malaysia, we usually see bamboo in clumps. Do we yeah. have the single stem type bamboo, like in China or Japan? Okay, because of our climate is so like 365 days of rain sunshine, they don't have to creep far. They just grow by, by one point. That's why we got clumps. Because in the temperate, it grow running because you have to feed to get the moisture, to get the, 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 nature, the fertilizer, and that's why they creep away. So this is where it, it has to adapt. So when we bring brought back uh, uh, the seeds from China, the Mosso bamboo, and try to plant in 1960s, yeah, uh, in Cameron Highland, the 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 tree goes still maintain its running behavior like uh, Mosso bamboo, single, not clumping, but the size is not huge. The size is like what I'm holding here. It's very thin, and it just grow rapidly. So it doesn't, it forgotten about the sizing to grow because in the temperate countries, they have only like half a year of sunshine. The other half of year is snow and, and cold yes. and things like that. And that's why they reserve the food and they grow, you know, expand a bit. So that's why they grow it. But in, in Malaysia, we, we have plenty and we just, you know, it just grow fast and and that's why we have that clump oh we are back to the present uh, One, wonderful we have your slide uh, back in uh, dato i think we have uh, answered many many questions uh, since uh, we started i think i'll allow uh, dato now to start on her slide presentation and uh, later on we'll try to fit in a few more questions if we can so dato 
Uh, All right. Thank you. Okay. Ramesh, can you play that? Thank you, Ramesh. I'm sure you've been, you know, all <laughs> berpeluh-peluh. <laughs> computer decided to play some tricks on me and test yeah. my patience. They, they need took attention. Okay, thank you, everyone. Uh, now so we're back to uh, the slides. Okay, can you play that? It's, it's still on not... Uh, so if you need to take more time, no problem. I see that we've got 79. And I had I saw a comment just now saying that they wish that it is a two-hour session. I don't mind. I'm here. It's up to you whether you've been cut off or not. I, I'm not going anywhere. Okay. So can we start with the slides? Is it is it is it on play mode? Yes, it is. Uh, I'll go to okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, this is the title of today's uh, presentation. So this is uh, the, the, the content, facts, types, um, environment, home landscape, workshop and projects. We can proceed. Next. Okay, the facts I've been explaining just now. Next. Uh, okay, the world have about 1,300 1, bamboo species whereby Malaysia, oops, where is it? Ramesh, huh? I, I can't can see. see. Uh -oh. Sudah hilang, Ramesh. <laughs> ah, there you are. I can see, uh, Mr. Ramadan. <laughs> Apa kabar? Baik, baik, sehat, sehat. Nama you ada okay. tau dalam slide? Ada, <laughs> jaga. Yeah. Okay, okay. Right. Hi, Ramesh. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> There's Mr. Ramadan, one of the uh, bamboo activists. <laughs> All right, uh, Ram Ramesh, you have to go back wherever, <laughs> wherever you. I'm. I'm and again, I'm like like an <laughs> old sifu holding a bamboo cane here. <laughs> I thought I got another interesting question. It's okay. uh, related to Panda. Panda, how can Panda. this is a from Eva Mera? Eva Mera, she's asking her question. How can a panda eat bamboo? Because no one can. <laughs> Actually, panda punya stomach tu, perut dia, they can chew the fiber. When he, he chew, actually the way panda eat is by stripping. You know, if you watch them eating, they, they have a very, uh, very, yeah. uh, you know, um, sharp teeth and they just strip and strip to get the juice. And and some of the the fiber that get into the stomach will be flushed out. Okay, so they eat like sixty kg per day. This wow. is what we study in the zoo. Is it a special species that they they they, yes. they eat? I, I understand when I was in the zoo, they, they said they actually uh, freighted the bamboo from China for the. Is it? Correct. Yeah, at first, at first, they, they freighted in case, you know, the, the both uh, panda wow. would miss their food. But actually, Malaysian, our, our scientists from FRIM brought in some samples. So they go to, to China and feed, and then they seed, and then they, we plant more at Denkel. So once yeah, they are here, they actually love uh, bulu betong. They like it more because betong is so thick and 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 they they have more juice so now they've forgotten about the china so they don't fit anymore we have plenty supplying to them from denkel uh area and and brought over to the uh, zoo almost every day can you get it okay coming back coming back oh dear clean alert what's that <laughs> no that's just a advisory on his computer okay I have another question also quite interesting. Uh, what other animals eat bamboo? Oh, the, some pests, yes. one, one or two only, not, not many. And you hardly see human eat the bamboo shoot. Oh, yes. <laughs> and, but, but that was the, the replenish. Lah. But if you go for the stem for lemang, it's only happen like once a year kind of thing. But those who, who really sell lemang by the roadside, they, they need it every day. Okay, can we go to the second slide again? The the number four above up atas lagi, yang the distribution atas lagi. Okay, can we start? Okay, 
Now, you can see that uh, out of 80 species, you can see that it's naturally grown in Malaysia, 20 species can be uh, commercialized. Okay, so whether the question uh, is our market ready to accept, it depends on what is the product. Always remember what is the product will determine what is the input. Okay, bamboo can live almost anywhere and takes many forms with many size colors and niches in the environment. It can grow in the tropics to the cold areas, as I mentioned, minus 15 degrees Celsius. Next. Ah, uh, okay. Bamboo is known for being the uh, having the uh, cat, cat category of fast growing species that matured within three to five years. So it can live for hundreds of years. A lot of people asking even how to take them away. They got bored, they don't know how to handle it and things like that also. So bamboo belongs to the grass family, Graminae. Okay, so they are able to grow and stuff in almost all any type of environment, except of course the North Pole and South Pole, of course, and then and and absorb forty percent more carbon dioxide and release thirty five percent more oxygen compared to the trees. So in one hectare of bamboo plantation, it can absorb twelve tons of carbon dioxide from the air annually in a year. So imagine if you have a hectare of bamboo plantation. You already help our environment to take away carbon dioxide. Okay, thank you. Next. Right, guys, we for listening. Remember, we mentioned there's some questions. Pay close attention. The clue lah. There are some questions from here. All right. So pay close attention to what Dr. Mazalina is saying today, because if you want to win prizes, uh, lots of answers based on some of the slides here. All right, so I move on to the next genetic. Yes, please. Okay, you can see that bamboo can grow as tall as 100 feet. And it wow. can start micro small as six inches. So these two are in the bamboo family. So if you're asking me, 1,300 species, these are the range. Okay, so this bulo giant, eh, giant bamboo or bulo uh, gagasi, ni dendrocalamus giganteus. So the word giganteus itself explains it is giant. Okay, so this is a picture from Bogor, Indonesia. We have pictures of that, but we all, we are so excited. We covered the, it's not really clear. So I have to use this photo. And this one, micro grass, I have it in my pots. So this is easily grow and, and it's not doing anything except for being a bushes. So you can remember which one you prefer for your landscape. Is it in your pot or you have a big land that you can place this? So this is an idea for, for gardens, for landscape. Okay, next. Okay, two types of bamboo groves, the clumping or rumpon uh, or the running, uh, that more so bamboo. So these are the, the two, uh, you know, it depends on where it grows. So if it's in the temperate, they are more running. If it's in, in the tropics, they are more clumping. Okay, so next, uh, the types and its usefulness. Next, okay, these are what the... Uh, the uh, Datuk Ghazi is our patriot from Nation Bamboo Society have declared and we all agree the world bamboo can consist like 12 uh, subject matters from the nursery, plantation, construction, interior decor, furniture, handcraft, textile, food, medicine, transport, entertainment and energy. I'm not going to be able to cover all so I will be selectively collect maybe three or four after this to explain a bit more on on the the usefulness of the bamboo of course it will be different type different country will focus different aspect and even different in, uh, industry will will also select which they are good in okay so next this is example bamboo in construction it can be a small house like that to a big big uh, four five tiers of bamboo this is majority uh being utilized in indonesia papua new guinea and all the, the the people who live in the forest that is near to the source that is the bamboo so it's an alternative material that can replace wood because of unique economical and sustainable characters so for this for the uh, construction, they focus on petong, minyak, duri, semantan, hitam, beting, beti, mata rusa, and also bulu berang. Okay, the bamboo is most useful building in the world because the world, I'm not saying Malaysia, is the whole world 
on the poverty side, they look into what's available. It's fast growth rate. So you don't need to replant because it regrows sustainably, suitable for consumption because of its high strength compared to the very lightweight. Okay, so it's stronger than iron. If you compare iron weight to the bamboo weight, it's so light and yet it's strong. And the material lightweight is easy to work with with the light tools, basic tools. Easily can be bent. How do you bend? You just torch and it just, uh, you know, pliable and you will just uh, be, can be bent. And it can absorb shock. And that's why buildings uh, using bamboo are being utilized for the earthquake area so that it can easily be repaired if it's damaged. So uh, durable as a wooden construction, so far, 40 years has been reported as a, with a proper treatment, it can withstand, the building can withstand for 40 years. Okay? You have to do maintenance, you have to do treatment. So you can see the house on the tree, tree house. You can see a mansion as big as that in Indonesia. Or you can see a small, you know, pondo like that. That that can you can see a lot of this when you go up to Cameron Highland in Tanarata, the Orang Asli a, a building at their house by the roadside. They also are made from bamboo. Okay, next. Okay, bamboo for food, selecting another field. There is, of course, we all know, I'm sure a lot of you have eaten bamboo shoot before. That's how they look like. But uh, you see, it can be turned into uh, condiments, uh, rebong, uh, achar, uh, bulo, uh, normal, yeah, uh, bulo lemang. Uh, that picture, the bulo lemang kuning is my own garden. And that's the one, uh, they all even put in uh, tempeh into bamboo, you know, so it's not only uh, a pulut, tempeh can also be placed and they store and it can make a round tempeh like that. So those are the pictures of bamboo shoot, how it come up, crop up and you harvest them. All right, next, uh, bamboo for uh, beauty and medication. So shampoo has been infused by bamboo silica or fibers. It aims to nourish the hair and promote hair growth. So imagine, because of silica, it strengthens the hair growth, yeah? So bamboo fiber, there are already a lot of shampoo with bamboo uh, silica. And, and then bamboo charcoal uh, can be uh, added into beauty, uh, you know, so it's uh, strongly absorbed the impurities found on the skin pores, pores and as a, this compared to soap. Okay, the bamboo salt, they put the salt in the bamboo, they close it. This is being done in Korea. And then they cover it with the clay and they burn it. Then after that, they got the bamboo salt that is infused with the uh, bamboo uh, juice and everything and also the heat from the red clay. So it, it can treat a lot of various illness. This is the use of it. So that's on the medication aspect. Next. Damesh. Okay, bamboo for textile and fabric. Okay, this is a common, when you have the bamboo stalk, it can be processed to fiber and spun into the yarn and woven into fabric. So uh, we have a few companies in Malaysia, especially Tihara, they have already turned, of course we don't have the textile yet, it has to be imported from overseas, but they dye and they uh, turn it into garments. So this is uh, very comfortable, when you are in the cold area, it feels warm. When you are in a hot area, it feels cold. So this is the uniqueness of bamboo textile. Okay, next. Bamboo for the environment. I'm quickly cover because of the time, but I don't mind. I'm, I can be here for two hours, you said. Okay, the characteristic no is a perfect, <laughs> perfect solution for the environmental and social consequences in case there is logging, deforestation, or even, you know, uh, a, a lot of uh, the, the forest problem, that make, uh, it's a search for alternative natural resources, which is fast recovery. That's what we want. And bamboo, the fastest growing species or plants, can be harvested between one to five, but actually between three to five, depending on the species. One, because of like bulo, uh, bulo lemang, because of we wanted to, to eat it, you know. So the quality of strength, like weight and flexibility, uh, flexibility is what uh, becomes a, is an alternative to the timber 
tropical uh, tropical timbers as mentioned for furniture and for building materials it also absorb green gas houses as mentioned earlier and release oxygen better than trees in renewable uh, resources help the world bringing forest to cover back rather than the soil will be flushed or, or drained out to the river and clog and create a flood you know so this is why we call it our than tebing our mean the below our tebing mean by the river so that's why if you see that if there are a lot of bamboo uh, growing by the river first it needs a lot of water it will absorb it will be happily grow there another thing it will also absorb the toxicity control the flood and this is among the usefulness of bamboo by the uh, river okay the, the extensive uh, rhizome system i explained earlier uh, that tie the top soil the top layer of the soil is crucial to prevent soil erosion so bamboo plays an important part to determine for structure also this is in line with the uh, environment uh, day is to restore ecosystem okay so bamboo is already been bordered by insect and pests that means we don't use pesticide and this can create a healthier environment. So next, we have the Nation Bamboo Society with Frame next. And also the Forest Department with all the local uh, enforcement agencies doing our corporate yeah, CSR community, the Penguat Kosa, Cameron Highland. This was done in 2019 uh, among the enforcement and MBS to safeguard soil erosion through bamboo planting activities. So they came about 99 people, one less person to be 100. So we are all there in Hutan Simpan, Bukit Jerut. And there are the area we plant a lot of them and they strive until today. 90% and above grows and that's why we are happy to to learn about this okay so next um this is bamboo for homes and landscape i think this is more what a lot of people look forward you can see these are the colors of bamboo who says bamboo is always yellow and green you can see it's also blue red wow. black, <laughs> white this is all over the world. This is all in Malaysia, okay? But if you have to be able, this is where it becomes a, a real, you know, collector item. This is why people aim to have it, but you have to have a big ground. Some of them are small, some of them are real giants. So depends on what you have in your hand, plan properly and study them, okay? That is, I amaze myself, okay? So I enjoy looking at this colorful item of bamboo. So next, I just highlight the unique, some of the unique ones. That is red bamboo. That's found a lot in China and also Japan. The tiger bamboo, there's a lot in India. The yellow growth bamboo, this is in Malaysia. The blue stem, umbrella bamboo or they call it blue dragon this is also in china and we have tortoise shell bamboo you see the the stem is not straight it's not even as i mentioned earlier with this bamboo i hold you know sometimes the the notes are, are intermingled and crisscross like the buddha belly bamboo this can be found in malaysia some of them are iridescent blue green and so lovely you know the uniqueness is what so you, if you like this, you can pot them. I know rather than it go everywhere running around your, your, your garden, you put them in pots. So they are being restrained from fast growing, okay? Okay, next, we go into what's um, good for landscape. Okay, the indoor, you put in container. When you put indoor means you put inside your house or under shade, okay? So compacted golden striped bamboo they are already plenty of colors they can be white blue yellow green and all that and just now the bamboo micro grass the little little guy so can be nice as a like a shrub or the pygmy bamboo species it'll be so dainty because this one they strive best when they you need to occasionally bring them outside to receive full sunlight and moisture okay unless you have that like uh, uh you know um a, a lot of sunshine coming into your house so a uh, quick that, for the bamboo micro grass can i just leave it in the sun uh, can. no problem okay uh, be before that so this is why yeah okay for the outdoor you can see uh the guy was asking about being uh you know yeah fence like a border 
please i will encourage you put like a like a stone or or in the places like that the the, the you know the container still manage yeah. proper unless you want to have it like a mixture or a hedge bamboo this bula paga the word paga means already you know it's fast growing and you have to control the shape so you can cut you can trim okay so you can add here and there because like the house with the with the chair the furniture there they put it in one container but it it as a as a backyard so it's nice and of course decorative uh, the, those are not growing but bamboo stem can be an, a deco item and it can last uh, long in your garden so these are among what you can utilize bamboo for gardens for your landscape if you meant for a big area, then it, you can treat it very openly and, and close to each other. You just have to use your imagination to create and what you have in hand. But first, study the behavior, whether they are running or they are clumping. Okay, next. Can we go next? Next will be... Um, okay, when you have a lot, when you have created... Uh, you know, it can attract as a as a tourist center like natural parks in Arashima Yama Bamboo Forest in Kyoto. This picture I took it, uh, you know, during our visit there. These are mosso bamboo, Philostachys edulis. Okay, they they grow running because this is in Japan. The one in Taman Bulo Frame, that's uh, our friends there, Yanti, Dr. Rafida, and Mr. Ramadan. We visited uh, Taman Bulo Frame in Kapong, and that is considered, we also have bamboo setum. So in Penang, they have bamboo setum in Botanical Garden, Penang Botanical Garden. So you can see nighttime in uh, bamboo forest in Kyoto, they light it up. And it's so beautiful, you know, a lot of people will come. It's good to visit during daytime. I mean, weekdays, not week weekends. It will be massive for people. And collection of bamboo for gardens, we can bring in, we can add in, but it has to be recorded where it comes from so that people will understand and learn more about what your collection is all about. So it attracts people. You can have like a, a set of bamboo collection. Okay, next. Okay, workshop and projects. As I highlighted some of our workshop with uh, Nation Bobo Society, uh, Mr. Uh, Major I.R. Mazlan is among the first uh, uh, earlier before me, the president who are keen to help out. So in this, uh, in FRIM, we have uh, training on bamboo ID. Uh, to idea how to identify bamboo because you can plant a wrong species for all you know. Uh, we have Ame Sarifuddin is our key person now. Uh, we also hands-on training planting bamboo to our members who have land and they wanted to know how how to open up a uh, uh, you know landscape or for the uh, plantation. So that is also with briefings to the members of Koprasi Agro Bamboo Malaysia uh, last year. And we have books, frames have books and publication. So we even help the Global Environment uh, Foundation save the river at Sungai Pulai Cameron Highland using bamboo to safeguard soil eroding into the river. So I'm not sure what happened now with this MCO. So if it's, uh, you know, we, we can cross border, we can visit back the area. Okay, next. Next will be on the, yes, Bamboo Jungle Adventures by I.R. Mazlan, the Major Mazlan. He create himself in Sungai Siput, you know. So he create International Bamboo Maestro, bringing, uh, you know, experts from all over the world to try to train local people. And they make a lot of, but they utilize, mostly utilize uh, pole, you know, come, there is pole stand rather than uh, press on. So this is how they treated. Treatment is really, really important if you intend to utilize bamboo for uh, uh, construction. So he already built the Masjid Bulo Kuala Kansa. There will be a lot of assignment to this group also. Next, uh, they are active until today. Uh, and this is Mr. Ramadan. He also have uh, his jungle um, 
in Hulu Langat, we call it KL Bamboo Junk Village in Hulu Langat uh, nearby. So, you know, he trained how uh, people can even stay there as a homestay. He have plenty of rooms and, and teach us how to, they also make Masjid Bulogo Musang. So he's one of them who participate. So these are all, you can see uh, buildings uh, here and there in Malaysia that you can enjoy because in the in the remote area, uh, this house from them is very common. So for us in the in the urban may like to feel how it feels like and and the, and, and we also have uh, Datuk Lai in Tadom. They also built a resort from bamboo. Okay. Next, we have always meetings and discussion and training. Uh, okay. So in the future, we like to have craft for the kids, yeah, for that to create awareness, not only uh, they can play around, but they learn also uh, craft like uh, the, the wind chime or the lantern, you know, the, the star lantern or the cup or the pot from bamboo, uh, you know, plum and, the, and for uh, candle making and planting. You, you can see it can be planted from the cuttings or it can be planted from the rhizome. The guy was holding that is already germinate, uh, growing. Eh? So, and how to make, to make lemang. Not many people know, even the old one don't even know how to make lemang. Don't, don't tell me these kids. Well, we, we can train them how to, you know, do it. And, and it, though it takes six hours to really turn around patiently, there are a lot of system that can, uh, speed up process within one hour you can have you can already sample your lemang okay i think that's about all next oh i need to tell you yeah, a lot of people mm. thought these are bamboo but it's not bamboo okay let's see it okay ramesh okay bamboo orchid is from the family of okay this is so it's not bamboo at all but because of the orchid stem have that uh you know so it was calling as bamboo orchid lucky bamboo the one chinese group our family or, or uh, generation likes to use dracaena is asparagus family okay that's those are not bamboo okay a lot of people will tell me oh i have on on my table i was shocked then I saw, oh dear, why do you call this? And he said, it calls lucky bamboo, fine. <laughs> you know, but these are not bamboo. Bamboo comes from gra grass, gramine. Next, bulo, okay, belimbing bulo. It's belimbing, but he called it bulo. Why? Because of the size, I don't know, you know, it's avo, avoha belimbi, family of CD Daisy. Okay, so this is not gramine, and this is a tree. And we have eaten a lot of this, by the way. And these are not, you know, fruits from the bamboo. Okay, next, you know, due to the environment day and the ocean day, we have bamboo shark. Imagine, so it's not bamboo. Okay, it's a shark. So it's from the kingdom animalia. The kingdom, because why? Because of the stripe. Because it got that stripe. And these are plenty of them. Sharks are being called bamboo. Uh, but because of the appearance, but scientifically they they, are, they have their names. So that's that's about all that I share with you guys because a bamboo by the word itself is amazing. So those who like to become members of Nation Bamboo Society can contact Yanti. I was uh, uh, still use her. Go to the website, the FB. And that's us, uh, me and my husband visiting Kyoto and our um, family. That's the Bamboo Playhouse, uh, Mr. Ramadan uh, been, uh, utilizing or, or making it before. And we have plenty of, from the tissue culture, you can also plant from the cuttings, from the rhizome, from the seeds. So plenty of way to uh, bring bamboo into your life, whether you like it or not. It will be part of your environment, but it really, conclusion, bamboo really has been with our environment ever since we even been born. Thank you very much. Okay, any more question? Dato, there are so many questions. I don't <coughs> think we have time for them. Thank but uh, so a lot of the questions that, that uh, I think have been answered already by you during your presentation. Okay. Good. Uh, Dato, can I ask a question? Yes, yes. Uh, as you say, um, the, uh, 
the use of bamboo have already started 2000 years ago but why many people still ignorance about the potentials of bamboo oh the 7000 years ago was done uh, in china because they use it to write uh, you know their script and all that yeah, that's why but in malaysia we don't utilize it until the early 60s when the british was was uh, doing logging and what creep in will be bamboo whatever the open space in the forest bamboo will creep in so start to study about bamboo in malaysia is very very young but all over other places in the world they have done a lot so if you say why don't we because first we have skeptical like bamboo miang so when you say miang because of the, the little, you know all the all the fine brussels and all brass bristol and that's why people worry <laughs> Guys, uh, those who are not talking, keep your mics off, please. Uh, so I have one question from Miss Lai. She's uh, from our STEM center, one of our teachers. And she's, uh, of course, she's so amazed and the different colors and species of the bamboos. Here's a question. Uh, some bamboos get sick. How do you treat uh, sick bamboos? How is there treatment for it? <laughs> Sorry, I can't hear. What is it? Um, are there ways to treat uh, bamboo which are, which are ill? Which are sick? Sick. S-I-C-K. -S sick. Yeah, sick. Oh, okay. What do you mean by sick bamboo? First, whether the leaf being eaten by the insect or it's not growing well. I think Ramesh, can you control those? We yeah, I'm trying to control it. A mute. Okay, go ahead, Dato. Also, I'm okay. not in the... All right. Okay. Um, actually, not much can be done for bamboo that is sick because bamboo is hardly sick. I can tell you, maybe you don't have enough fertilizer or the space that glowing, the bamboo is cramped. So it's already stunted. So you have to be a bit uh, specific when you call a sick bamboo. Maybe to you it's sick, but it's actually that is the behavior of the bamboo. They tend to grow slowly. They tend to, you know, because I did a, a bamboo bonsai myself. I restricted the plant in one pot. And all it, it produces is leaf, but it's not growing. It's, they have no new shoot. But at least I understand it doesn't like in this very, you know, containment area. But at least it behaves the, the, the bonsai that I like to create. So it becomes like a, a nice, uh, you know, little town that I put in, uh, you know, little, little houses so that it looks nice with the bamboo uh, at the back of the of of this uh, bonsai so it depends uh i have to she have to be more specific when you say sick okay any more question Dato, can I... uh, yashin salva kuma yes Yes. Can we make bamboo? Yes, you can. Come over, participate. Tell your parents toys. to send you to the workshop and we make toys together. Yeah, so the answer is can. We can do lots of toys and crafts. <laughs> Okay. Have you have you touched on the treatment uh, of bamboo to preserve it? Okay, with regard to bamboo treatment, you have to go through a proper uh, training. I can't just be telling you and you will be, you know, doing it right away. The bamboo treatment is a very serious technique that need it to be immersed uh, with the right uh, facilities. 
uh, you know, with boric acid and all that. So a lot of uh, all this uh, method needs to be the do's and the don'ts also. So I won't be able to explain in, in this short time to explain about bamboo treatment, but you can actually Google. There's a lot of, and, and us, uh, in a, a go participate in the Malaysian Bamboo Society Facebook. You can ask questions, there will be people who answer, they, uh, give you the answers. Uh, there are experts like uh, Mr. Ramadan, uh, Major Mazlan, um, who else? A few more, Datuk Lai. They all have been treating bamboo for the sake of construction. I mean, it's how long uh, a lamp, uh, bamboo can last compared to wood? Ah, that's why just now the 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 study shows 40 years. Wow, that's good. Yep. Thank you. Yes, I have two questions. I want to use it to build a cabin. Good. All the best. Can the as some kind of roof tower? What? For house? Yeah. For house? For the roof. Roof. Where is it, Ramesh? Roof, roof, roof. For the roof. Can it make for roof? For the roof. Ah, the roof, roof. roof. yes. Uh, plenty of time, if you were to visit the Orang Asli uh, natural house, they built the roof from the bamboo. Just just cut and, and flatten it. So, because bamboo have this... Uh, repellent because of the waxy outer layer it will repel the water the rain you know so it can be uh, shingles make into shingles and overlap yes that's all i want to ask um yes. you say um bamboo also have potentials in transportation industry uh, can you please elaborate it further Okay, when it comes to transportation, among others is what they make into uh, samples of bicycle. Okay, by other means, you can see Ferrari, Mercedes utilize the bamboo, you know, veneer for their for their dashboard. Even some of them turn it into the steering. So these are among the parts in the uh, transportation uh, area, not really making a bus or although we can see in Philippines, they make, uh, they really uh, decorate their motorbikes into bamboo in order to attract people to, you know, ride onto their tut -tut, you know, so that this mobile thing can go around. That is just, but the real thing as a bicycle, uh, you know, frame, it is made of bamboo. You have seen that. I'm sure uh, I Amazon have made a lot of that. And also, um, it also, you know, in music, a lot. Who can name me uh, equipment, uh, music equipment that is utilizing bamboo stem? Zeker. Say what? And um, flute, flute. Flute, yes. And guitar, maybe? Guitar, yes. Have you heard about? Ding dong dong. Angklung. Angklung, yes. Yeah, there are a few things. Angklung is really a, a band team, yeah. But there are person who one person can control the whole angklung items. Uh, not many school play angklung anymore. Uh, that was... So we can make. Uh, instrument a... by bamboo, is it? Yes. Just now, who's that? Um, Cal Nico? Was it you? Can, uh, can I have a question? Can you send the slide to me? It's too large. Really? You can ask Ramesh. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Just now, this person is asking, can you, I continue now, with your question? Yes. Now, are the dry leaves uh, good inputs for composting? For what? Posted. Composting. Organic uh, composting. Oh, composting. Yes, yes. But somehow, the, the leaves, actually, you have to shred them. If you don't shred them in, in pieces, we found that more than one year, it will not deteriorate. Oh, because so of long. it repellent. Yeah, it, it repel off uh, the, the water repellent. So if you shredded it, it will be faster. Because 
you can see although you know we a lot of people been just scrape it and put it together it have to be mixed with other uh, microbes and and other yes. uh, leaf yes yes that's right yeah then because, it faster uh, it will be faster ah uh, because we notice the uh, you know the leaves are, are quite hardy yeah yes yeah now another thing is the side branches of the bamboo what possible uses can they be the the branches okay yes. all this uh, easily can be beside the composting it can be turned into charcoal oh but we have uh, bamboo uh, branches that are about pencil size you know yeah. cut, cutting them for uh, measuring and and pegging we don't know what else we can do yeah you can if you have the the, the equipment for to make a uh, charcoal you just you just put them in because you can be an activated charcoal that is used for medication ah. but you have to be a high quality you know mm. you just don't shovel mix with other things you have to be very specific and you have to be utilized like uh, the process called pyrolysis so oh. then then only you have the good because this uh, activated charcoal people use it to when they have indigestion stomach ache or toxicity you know they 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 taken something wrong so they pop in you know digest and this will absorb the toxicity within your stomach you have to be really medical great so it's not easy but it can be done on a proper measurement all this stem little little stem can be utilized no problem yeah thank you Dato. you're welcome you have any data on this uh, water purification aspect compared to coconut shell mm, i don't have data sorry but it, a lot have been uh, you can google and you can find they making it into the Pengapesan, yeah, the the treatment, and and um, some of them turn it into pills. I have seen charcoal were placed in one uh, you know container, so it will absorb the water uh, impurities, and so it produce a clean water. And I've drank it, so no problem because the way it it really make into different different layers from the the big size to a very mm -hmm. fine line of uh, bamboo uh, or the charcoal uh, elements yes Zailan anything I saw Zailan name I can't hear you okay I think uh, we have a lot of questions which are here. Uh, thank you very much, everyone, for your questions. Uh, are there any other questions that you'd like to ask? Maybe we can uh, you can direct them to our STEM for All. We'll try to go through all the questions. And uh, uh, Mr. Ramesh, do you have any questions? Uh, Ramesh, you're muted. Okay. Okay. Can you hear now? Yes. Okay. No. All right. Perhaps just conclude. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, William, you go first. You like to say something, and then I we thank. Uh, well, then the, uh, conclude this. Thing. William. Uh, yes, um, I would like to thank uh, Dato very, very much. She, we have actually overextended the yeah. session. Can I hear you? I can. I can hear. Thank I'm you. Welcome. Yeah, I uh, can hear me. Yeah? All right. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Dato very much for giving us such a sensational and animated uh, uh, meeting. I just realized that... Yeah. We have actually uh, now it's almost almost yeah, five thirty, okay. and I didn't see the time. Go. I think Ramesh, your your Wi-Fi is a bit weak on that end.
You're welcome. Uh, all the best to your effort and hope that, you know, more uh, all this information. Uh, lagging? Is that... All right. Can you hear can, can you hear me? With... Yes, I can. You're welcome. Thank you, yeah. everybody. Okay. Who um, uh, in the uh, chat. On behalf of uh, Bullet Okay, so on behalf of STEM for all makerspace, on behalf of Macri, we like to thank you so much. And uh, yes, we do look forward to doing more activities together with the Bamboo Society, Malaysia Bamboo Society. Yeah. So okay. thank you so much. And uh, those who have participated, we share the link. You want to attend the question, you go on to the link. We that with you try to answer the five questions and uh, if you're a lucky winner uh, we will you'll be getting a prize you have to come to our center and we'll give you a very effective goodie back right so again uh, thank you so much and sorry for all these interruptions and uh, inconveniences we hope you have a peaceful day. okay thank you again for having yep. me all right. Okay, so thank you. thank you very much, Dato. I hope. And, uh, thank everybody. you very much, Dato. You're welcome. Thank you very much, Dato. Thank you. You're welcome.